We're going to begin our introduction on this book that focuses mostly on nutrition and also dieting and weight loss and some of the tidbits and help that you can get by following some of the guidelines here. Now this is not a Barbie's story and I begin with my story because I think it will be important for you to know what things have worked for me and what things have not worked for me and maybe give you some ideas on alternative methods or tidbits, tips on how to lose weight. This is of course my own perception of my reality. Everybody lives his own reality. Some realities are prettier than others and mine as I was going to find out was not ideal. Many weight loss guys out there talk about wonderful regimes, recipes, yoga, shred fat this in here and shred that pilates, killing yourself at the gym, pills and magical staple stomach surgeries. I heard them all. A few have great suggestions on how to avoid everything that you love to eat, but few guides provide moms a possible way to schedule their habits, day, and goals. I hope that during this course, I can provide this for you. Like I said, little help or tidbits that will challenge you and how to think about your body, how to change your program habits, how to change the way that you will view yourself and also, we're going to be talking about the two brains, your gut and your real brain, and how they work together. The truth is that I never thought I would write a book about how not to be overweight or obese at 37 years old. I have never really had a problem with weight. Yes, I was tiny. I was 5'4 and 122 pounds after two kids. The wonderful thing about life is that it always comes a time in which a bitch slaps you right on the face. So yes, this was it. My turn had come in. The weight kept coming up, and the more I tried, the more it seemed to stay. This happened to me just after I got out of the U.S. Army. At 41 years old, and after having my third child, and having served in the U.S. Army for a short period of time, in which I endured what could have been a mortal back injury, my body physiology, my weight, my balance, and my self-esteem changed completely for the worse. Falling six floors to half payment really threw me for a physical, mental, and also a self-esteem fight. With my just barely mended legs, I still try for the first two years after getting out of the service to run every morning at 5 a.m. and keep up with gym exercises and the previous U.S. Army routine that had previously turned me into a superwoman. The U.S. Army has switched my metabolism in just three short months from 149 pounds to 122 pounds and someone that could run, march for 20 miles and do all kinds of things. Three months earlier, I had been barely able to run for five minutes without being in extreme pain and out of breath. The past routine that had kept me in shape and ready for combat was still there, but my legs and my spirit, as I would later find out, were still broken up, or at least what we call shadow, my shadow self was winning. Every morning I tried to follow my routine of getting at 5 a.m., tried to run at least non-stop for a couple of miles, but after that both legs would swell up so much I couldn't walk without my crutches, and at night my muscles would shorten and my body would ache for hours with real pain and hurt to the point of screaming. The army's recipe, you ask? Well, morphine, codeine, and a concoction of relaxers and other painkillers several times a day. At this point, I still have asked questions to the veteran army medical doctors that treated me, but for more than the last two years, they have been just telling me what to do. So I trusted these so-called professionals, the military machine. 
and the press shoulder is a braised shoulder, the pamphlets read, the answer was to push multiple physical therapy appointments, which basically were useless, as they made me turn my neck up and down five times a day, and that was it. What a waste of my time and my health. Soon I fell into the victim mentality. They said that I was broken, and I, of course, accepted it without question. None of us are really broken, ever. So if anyone tell you that you're broken, run. At the beginning, it seemed to happen casually. I started to slack on my physical therapy. I didn't want to go to my doctor's appointments, which seemed useless, and my doctors recommended surgery, the knife. I felt alienated. I felt alone. I felt different. I couldn't establish a friendship with no one, especially women or men for that matter, and dating was pointless. Every time I went on a date, I fall into being a counselor or psychologist role when all I really wanted was some smart conversation and some time to know another human being. It seemed like I was living this other reality. And guess what? I really was. I really wanted to just stay at home 24-7 and look through the window. I convinced myself that feeling like this was not an excuse enough not to go to work. So soon I started working a desk job in technical support which is a sedentary type of job. And I led all the PE of physical therapy, body conditioning and training that I have achieved in the last two years banish. Hundreds of hours running, doing push-ups, sit-ups, burpees, crunches, running up and down the stairs, jumping trenches in the heat and with torrential rain. Hours of eating nutritious good food went down the toilet thanks to a shift in paradigm and thinking that came from others' view of my disability. Their sick mentality got to me, and I gave up my power. My ego had won the battle finally. Meanwhile, the system pushed and pushed, and my ignorance of not knowing at the time that I was giving up my power to them allowed it to happen. Finally, some clarity began to merge out of the picture. Sitting on a chair, looking at the window, and in silence for three weeks after my fall, and what the U.S. Army considered aggravated conditions by other soldiers. Let's say things that should not happen in the U.S. Army, but happen anyways. And we're not talking about the Me Too movement here, so let's move on. But I would like to point here that this guy, even though I start talking about myself, this guy is not about me, but about you. I just wanted to let you know that there's hundreds of thousands of women that feel the same way. I would like to point out here that many studies have done for every health organization in the world about sexual abuse, assault, and weight gain. I believe as a doctor of natural medicine, that there is definitely a correlation between sexual assault and fibromyalgia or body syndromes. We're going to talk about a lot of these topics later on. Yes, we're going to be talking about nutrition, body types, in addition to other things such as exercise and supplements, NLP, and all kinds of tidbits and help for you to lose weight. Research this if you're interested, but pretty much it means that if you have suffered abuse, such as domestic violence, assault, or you suffer from PTSD, traumatic events, those events get recorded in your spirit and yes, also in your muscle and in your bodies, because your muscles also can store memories. i see you in the next video. In the next video, we're going to start talking about NLP, we're going to cover PTSD, and then after that, we're going to start giving you great tips on how to lose weight. i see you then, and thank you so much for signing up for this course. 
you're going to learn a lot about yourself in this course. Check out the course and I'm going to try to include some videos that are free for you to watch as a preview. So you can see that not only we're going to be talking of course about, you know, body syndromes and PTSD, but also about diet, nutrition, body types, your attitude, how you see yourself, how others see you, and other empowering contests for women. Thank you and have a great day.